Me hente. Me hente, my people. How we doing, beautiful people? Nice, cold, chilled, chilly uh, <clears throat> fall morning. And uh, hey, hey, we 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 all know what's going on. We all know what happened. A lot of people who formulated and generated opinions based on what the mainstream media is spoon feeding you. I'm really starting to believe the purpose of the mainstream media is to cause division and to cause us to hate each other and fight each other and war amongst each other over bullshit. Because if you have a chaotic society, if you have a chaotic society where the citizens are imploding on each other, the people at the top have justification to pass laws and ordinances that take away all our rights, liberties, and freedoms. That's what it comes down to. There's somebody up top that has an agenda that wants to control this whole shit on some 20s, 30s Russia, uh, 20s, 30s Germany type shit, man. You know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So many of us are so easily misled. And you can tell who's misled by the rhetoric and the things that they say. When this whole Kyle Rittenhouse situation popped off, right? When it first popped off last year, like, I'm so used to the narrative of crazy white guy kills unarmed innocent black people. That's such a common story that's a common headline that when i heard this shit a year ago i, was, I wasn't even interested i'm like yo just it's another situation he's probably gonna get off this is some bullshit he killed a couple of black people or whatever you know and i didn't i didn't really think much of it you know a lot of people more emotionally invested into it but it's like in my mind like i see this situation so much man how could i how could i even get bothered by this this shit happens all the time it's business as usual you know and then uh, once the trial started happening within the last couple of weeks, I even made a video. I made a video saying that um, I still contend that he should have uh, never been in the first place. I do contend that. But I made a video. I, I just assumed that um, he crossed state lines with a gun. Um, at, that, at that point, I knew he didn't kill black people. But before I even got to that po point of my first video, you know, I thought I just assumed he killed black people. I was wrong about that. Um, I thought that he got a gun in uh, Antioch and then illegally took it over across state lines. I was—I found out I was wrong about that. Uh, I thought that uh, it was illegal for 17-year-olds to have weapons in their possession in uh, Wisconsin. I was wrong about that. Um, I even thought that uh, a 17-year-old giving somebody uh, money to purchase a firearm is illegal. It's, it's not. I thought I, I was wrong about that. He never even owned the gun. The gun was in his friend's possession, but but whatever. The point I'm trying to make is any any and everything that I ever thought about this particular case, and actually, you know, let, let's keep running 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 now. I thought, you know, he was um being the aggressor and running up on people and shooting people and trying to be a hero. I was wrong about that. There's like dozens and dozens of videos showing people approaching him, you know, and being aggressive towards him. I thought he was the aggressor. You watch his interviews and his countenance and how he carries himself, not aggressive at all. Now, and this is the thing, like some people, they'll hear this shit, oh, stop caping for the white man. Stop caping for the white man. The irony of the situation is to, to those of you that, that think this black people that think this is some great injustice and justice was not served, he killed white people. So technically, I can say the same thing to you. Stop caping for the white man. Stop caping for the white man. We don't got no dog in this fight. But anyway, I'm not gonna talk about that. I don't got no dog. I don't have no dog in the fight of a white person killing a white person, but I do have a dog in the fight of my black people wanting to fight and do harm to each other and be uh, and not no longer be friends with each other over some issues that involve white people dealing with each other and on top of that 
not having all the correct information about the situation. I definitely have a dog in that fight. I have a dog in the fight of telling the truth of actually what happened. I don't give a damn if you black, you white, Spanish, Asian, or whatever, man. If there's a false narrative being pushed, and I know that shit's not true, I'm gonna talk about it. There's no way I can't, I can't not talk about it. I'm a comedian. That's what we do. We the first people that talk about shit. Even before like I um the verdict dropped and all that and I started getting my facts, I, I done came up with one of my best jokes ever. I opened my set saying, yo, I thought all this time that Kyle Rittenhouse killed black people. And I said that five different times in five different stages and it gets a fucking crazy laugh every single time. Why? Because everybody thought this shit. Everybody thought it. That's why my joke is so funny. That's why it's so dope. But anyway. What else did I think? Um, that's that's pretty much it. I thought he took guns over uh, state lines. I was wrong about that. I thought it was illegal for a 17-year-old to, to have a gun. I was wrong about that. Um, I thought he lived, at first, I thought he lived three hours away from Kenosha. I was wrong about that. I didn't know he had family in Kenosha. I didn't know his father lived in Kenosha. I didn't know he had a job in Kenosha. I didn't know none of that shit. They made it seem like this was just some random dude uh, just, just just trying to be a hero in a random place. He's like watching the news. I like, fucking about to be a hero and kill some niggas. And if he went with the intent to kill black people, why didn't he kill black people? Now they say, oh, you know, he killed people from Black Lives Matter. First of all, the first person that he killed, like, first of all, they all had murky past. But I'm not even going to get into the murky past. I like to get, get into what was happening in that specific moment at that particular moment. That's what I like to get into. And if the first dude he killed on Rosenbaum, first of all, him and Kyle had, this is all on tape. He had a run-in with Kyle earlier that day. And this is supposed to be the guy that's Black Lives Matter. He said, kill me, nigga. Kill me, nigga. Kill me, nigga. Really? Black Lives Matter accept that? They accept somebody? Hey, as long as you're protecting black people, you can say nigga all you want. Because he, he was one of them hood white dudes. Like the, the way he was saying it and the comfortability that he was saying it, you can tell he grew up around black um, black people. I, I've seen white people like that all my life. He wasn't like your cookie cutter suburban white guy. He was, a, he was a wigger. That's exactly what he was. Not justified or nothing like that. But Black Lives Matter accept that? That's, that's y'all representative? That's your protect. I'm not, I'm not even talking about the crimes. I'm not talking to, to me. The crimes that the the criminal uh, history of the three individuals that was there is it's, it's of no consequence. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not like Kyle knew that and then he hunted them down. And he was being a vigilante. You can't be. A, you're not a vigilante if you're trying to uh, trying to get away and defuse the situation of motherfuckers that's trying to attack you. But there's there's so much. Like, so many people, they only watch Channel 3 News or Fox News or whatever, and that's the only thing y'all watch, and that's the only narrative that you accept and that you believe. And then when people try to expose them, like, nah, yo, in actuality, this is what happened. Y'all get mad and want to fight or don't want to be friends or more, or want to block people over the truth or want to call names. How you going to want to call me a name just because I see a different angle, I see a more true angle? And this is the wild shit about the whole thing. To all of y'all people that think this is a travesty of justice, and y'all think he crossed state lines with a gun, you think he got it illegally, and you think he was being aggressive and trying to be a hero and all this bullshit, I believe the same thing. I can drop you a video right now. I thought just like y'all. Until I started doing the research for myself and stopped just like accepting what was being what was being shared by the mainstream media. Do you know that Facebook at one point in time was blocking people? Or, 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 or yeah, blocking people, sending people to Facebook jail just because they say hashtag Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent? Isn't it innocent until proven guilty? Facebook was blocking people for saying that in the case, one day, I don't, I don't even think like, he wasn't even on trial yet, he was just indicted. Mainstream media, man. Why are we so easily misled? It's not wrong to be wrong. I'm telling you, man. Like, uh, like initially, um, I was saying, uh, I still, I still contend like, it was better if Kyle would have stayed home. None of this shit would happen. But um, I still contend that. But uh, I was, I, I, I forget the status that I made, or whatever. 
But all the mainstream bullet points I was putting out, and my homeboy, his name's his name's Devin B. Morgan. I put it, I put his name out there. Cool dude. Um, you know what I'm saying? He was like uh, everything that I I thought he refuted. I was like, this nigga drove for like three hours to to go into this town. He's like, nah, actually, he lived 20 minutes away. And I'm like, well, this dude uh, took a rifle across state lines. And he's like, uh, no, actually, he bought it. He his friend bought it. His friend who was a believe. He, actually, he bought it in uh, the town that that he used it. And I was like, well, um, okay, but he's too young to get a gun. Man. You know, he bought it, he bought it illegally. He had a, I didn't say fake ID, but I'm like, he bought it illegally. He's like, no, actually, his friend was 18, and his friend is the one that bought it and, and owned the gun and was gonna transfer possession of the of gun to him once he turned 18. I'm like, damn. I'm like, well, he was the aggressor, right? You know, he's the one that set it off and initiated things. He's like, no, actually, the first guy threw something at him and tried to grab the gun from him. The second guy hit him in the back of the head with a skateboard and tried to grab the gun from him. The third guy approached him with a gun. And then he shot him. As was the treat. That was the worst I ever got my ass handed to me in a debate with something that I knew. And it was my fault because I'm debating and my information is based on false information without me actually like doing the Crawford reference myself. But it's like, I'm just so used to the situation happening. It's like, I'm, I thought I saw it. Like, it's, it's, it's like, I, it's like, I thought I saw this situation before. So I, I felt like I didn't really have to have to research and I got upset and I deleted Devin and I feel bad about that shit. Cause I got swept up into that shit. But I'm a man of logic more than I am a man of emotions. I definitely am. And once I looked at it, looked at all the information, and he wasn't even being rude to me. He wasn't cussing me out. He wasn't doing none of that. He even called Kyle a hero. Now, I think Kyle had a heroic mindset to want to protect the business. The reason why he was there, there was a car dealership business that um, one of his friends, uh, you know, friends of the family owned. And they just wanted some help to, to, to stand in front of it and protect it. It's, it's just kind of like um, like in the movie Barbershop. I think Barbershop Part 2. Uh, uh, Cedric the Entertainer was having a flashback of the riots of the 60s or some shit like that. And they had the Black Panthers in front of the barbershop. They had the Black Panthers in front of the barbershop to protect it. You know what I'm saying? Because like, if there's no police, there's no police presence to protect the businesses when this is going down. People take arms and weapons and they... they, they they, they police themselves and they protect themselves. That's what the whole Second Amendment is all about. So I get it. Now, is it wise for a 17-year-old to be the person that you rely on to protect it? I don't think so. I don't think so. But they draft 18-year-olds to go to war and shit like that. Maybe things should be changed. Maybe they should raise it to 21. Maybe you should be a little older before you're able to buy, um, uh, um, before you're able to hold a firearm in Wisconsin. Um, maybe you should be, maybe you shouldn't be allowed to give another person money to buy a weapon. But the thing is, if I give you money, it's your decision to do whatever you want to do with the money that I gave you. So you, you can't really get them with that neither, man. But we get, we get so swept up. We get so caught up in false narratives, man. And we ready to tear each other down. And and this is the scary thing. Like, like I said, I thought just like a lot of you guys and ladies before I really, really looked into this. And I'm not calling you stupid for it. I'm not. The media is very persuasive. The media is very, very convincing, man. This is a left world. Social media is leftist. The media is leftist. You know what I mean? Everything pans to the left, so it's easy to kind of get swept up into that left mentality. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm not right. I'm not left. I lean more libertarian. I lean kind of towards the right. You know, I'm more liberal with certain things, and I'm more conservative with certain things. There's no black and white. I think all of us have elements of everything, man. And that's the problem, though. We all, assume too many people have you either on this side or you're on that side mentality. Or because I believe this, then that must mean I'm a Trump supporter. Or because I like that, that must mean I'm a support Biden. No, it's not that, it's not that simple, man. We gotta do more re, like research and we have to like formulate opinions based on multiple sources of information, not just the mainstream media, not just the main, the news cycle and the news reel that they're trying to put out. There's motherfuckers on the left that's reneging. They're just like I reneged. I was like, well, you know what? We were wrong about that. He didn't take guns across state lines. We were wrong about that. 
It's not illegal for a 17 year old to open carry a rifle. We were wrong about that. It's not illegal for a kid to, to uh, you know, an 18 year old to buy guns. We were wrong about that. He didn't initiate. We were wrong. Now, the only, like I said, the only thing I just feel like he shouldn't have been there. He had the right mindset. He was trying to help. I know if, if he runs it back in his mind, he wishes he wasn't there. Couple of people that he popped up, popped. They got, they had murky pasts. But that's not the issue. That's kind of like just a, uh, you know, he killed a pedophile. That's that's a convenient bonus to the situation. But he didn't know that. He didn't know of that guy's. He didn't know any of those people's past. He was just trying to get the fuck up out of there, man. But historically, when you are an individual that tries to break paradigms and you try to expose truth, people will ostracize you. People will ridicule you. People will no longer be your friend. People don't want to do business with you. People will try to kill you only because you know the truth. The same thing happened with Martin Luther King. The same thing happened with John F. Kennedy. The same thing happened with Malcolm X. The same thing happened with Gandhi. The same thing happened with Jesus, man. I don't believe in the Bible, but the Bible has a lot of practical stories that a lot of people can relate to. And Jesus was basically trying to tell all the people um, in, 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 in that particular region of the world that they were worshiping God incorrectly. And he wanted to show them the right way to do it. He wanted to show them the truth. And you know how they rewarded him by exposing them and showing that they were hypocrites and trying to show people the real and the truth. They fucking killed him, man. So there comes a large price when people are trying to kill you just because you're trying to give them a different type of information. You got to ask yourself, what makes you so emotionally charged that you want to do bodily harm to somebody and that you want to dislike somebody? just because they have some new information that can kind of give light more light on a very popular situation that the media is being shady about and it's an automatic trigger and y'all all got the same talking points and y'all all say the same thing about this particular case now all y'all was wrong him crossing state lines illegally with a gun not true him living three or four hours from the, from the spot not true him not knowing anybody in kenosha not true him holding um, holding a gun illegally, not true. Him uh, obtaining a firearm illegally, not true. None of that shit is true, man. And people say, oh, if he was black, it would be the situation would be different. Of course, we live in America, KKK, man. Saying he would get mystery, right? saying if he was black, things would go differently, is like saying uh, if Patrick Ewing. Uh, was playing, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if Patrick Ewing, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of an analogy, y'all. Because Michael Jordan can commit all the flagrant fouls he wants to Chicago, and the referees ain't gonna, ain't gonna call it. They're not gonna call it. You know what I'm saying? So obviously, if Patrick Ewing was committing flagrant fouls in Chicago, of course they're gonna call that shit. Because he, he's the away team. Black people are the away team. I need people to stop saying, "Oh, if this was a black person, things would have been different." Of course, it would be a black. Uh, 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 of course, it would be different, man. America is fucking uh, United Center, and black people is Patrick Ewing. Of course, we're not gonna get the right calls. Of course, we gonna get treated differently. America is fucking Foxborough, and black people is Vinny Testaverde when he played for the Jets. Ah, uh, man, I'm unfollowing a lot of people, man. A lot of y'all people are so controlled, man. You're so brain brainwashed, but I got hope in y'all. I believe in y'all, and that's why I keep doing this shit. Some of these clips I, 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 I share, yo, just watch this shit. Just watch it. Don't just watch one side. Just watch an unbiased, unpolitically affiliated video. Just no, with no commentary. Just watch the video. Watch his body language. Watch him trying to re retreat. Watch him running away. Watch him trying to get away. Watch him putting his hands up and going towards the police. If he thought he did some heinous ass shit, like what, what motherfucker does heinous shit, murders a whole bunch of people and then runs to the cops with his hands up? I'll wait. They do a suicide mission. They going to bucket the cops because they just know they did something wrong. So they about to die. I don't. I, I'm done, man. I'm out. Peace.